What's up guys? So as you know, product research is the most important part of an Amazon FBA business. If we don't get this part right, none of the rest of the business works at all. So today I'm gonna to hop into my screen. We're gonna do product research unscripted, unprepared, because I believe that gives you the most insight, the most realistic approach. You can see the little details in between. You can see my thought process throughout the whole time. And it's really what's needed to actually learn product research, not just some scripted, we're gonna find products here and there, but a realistic version of me walking through things, how I would do on my own, how I do if I was you know, in my room alone, which kind I am right now. But anyways, guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Cameron James. I've been selling Amazon FBA going on five years now. First year did $1.3 million in sales. Since then, we've had multiple six and seven figure Amazon FBA business. So if you guys wanna stay up to date with everything latest on Amazon FBA, everything when it comes to e-commerce, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Otherwise, guys, let's hop on my screen. Give me five minutes here to get in a groove. Again, doing it on the fly here. I just need to get the creative juices flowing. So once I get in that groove, the value is gonna be there. So make sure you stick around. It will be worth it, I promise. Okay, hopping on my screen here, guys, we can see that I'm on amazon.com. So we'll be using this today as well as Helium 10. Uh, so if you have Helium 10, fantastic, great. If you have Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, all the tools we'll be using here today, you'll be able to use with those as well. So don't go buy a new program or software if you don't need it. But if you do need Helium 10, there's a 50% discount code down below in the description. Otherwise, guys, let's keep moving around here. And if you don't have Helium 10 right now, stick around, watch this video. This will be definitely worth it, okay? So looking at this first, we're gonna do something a little different here if you've watched any of my videos in the past. I'm tired of people putting constraints on what they can look for in a product that has to be in this exact category, has to be within here or there. No, when you put yourself in a box, you extremely limit yourself from what you'd be able to find, okay? So we need to think outside the box sometimes. If we're all looking in the same box, we're all gonna fail if we're looking exactly for the same things. So today I'm gonna do something a little differently just to get the, the mind jump started, get the creativity flowing here. Uh, so we're on Amazon bestsellers list. So to get back here, just to show you, if you go to the homepage, hit bestsellers right up here. And this is going to show us literally the best sellers on Amazon. So if it's bestsellers and baby, number one, Pampers right here does the the most sales on Amazon within this category. So same thing with here at health household. Number one is batteries. So these batteries right here sell the most in health and households. So this is gonna give us a great idea of what's doing the most volume on Amazon. So we're gonna be able to see what how we're gonna kind of do this. I'm gonna talk a lot more about branding and, and niching down and, and how do we take these big categories and, and find our little spot in the market with these? How do we find our little corner, steal some sales from the, the big niche and really get settled in and established, okay? So we're gonna talk a lot about that as well today because I think that's really important important and people don't talk enough about that. So what I'm going to do here uh, on Amazon, getting started here before I talk about anything with Helium 10, I'll show you how we use that here in a bit, is I'm going to open up, let's go down here. So I'm going to open up Beauty and Personal Care and I'm going to open up, let's see, Grocery and Gourmet Food, Handmade Products, Health and Household, and we're gonna start right there, okay? So if you know, if you watch some of my videos in the past, I have never started with these categories ever before, okay? So that's why I'm telling you and why we're doing it this way is because again, we're opening up more avenues, more areas we can kind of explore because we all get stuck in these boxes, like I said, and I wanna make sure that you know that you don't have to do that. You can go outside of these avenues and this is how you do this, okay? So looking at beauty and personal care here, we see that, we see uh, grocery and gourmet food, we see handmade products, and we see health and household, okay? So what we're looking for is just ideas, right? I'm gonna get the ideas churning. So we're looking down here, uh, we keep just scrolling down, scrolling down. Uh, we see a lot of face things, we see a lot of things for skin, we see all, all sorts of stuff, right? But what I'm looking for is just something to get the, the ideas going, okay? So like this, strip lash adhesive. So now I'm thinking fake eyelashes, I'm thinking eyelashes in general. So this is some field we can go in really deep into and figure out, I'm sure there's a ton of money in eyelashes. I really haven't looked into it too much myself, but this is what I'm looking for, right? So again, just stick with me five minutes here and let me get the ideas churning. I, I, again, this is just a more realistic approach to actually how this, this works, okay? So if you're stuck there not getting ideas when the first few minutes, this is probably why you gotta give it five minutes or so to get the ideas rolling. Okay? Okay, so looking down, so I like eyelashes, that's interesting. So for those eyelashes, I'm actually gonna go down here. I made this quick Excel sheet here, essentially, or Google Sheets, and it's just product ideas, notes, links, and keywords. That way I have something to reference back to in the future, and I can collect all my notes. So eyelashes just came up, so eyelashes, and I'm just put it, you know, accessories, essentially, right? So we're gonna come back to this and we're gonna explore this a little bit more. Uh, also notes wise, we're gonna go deeper into this as well. And essentially this is just our idea sheet. And then we're gonna go deeper into these ideas using Helium 10, just looking through Amazon and figure out if this is a good niche we can kinda work around, right? So going back to the bestsellers page in beauty and personal care, we're just gonna see if there's any other ideas that kinda catch the eye. 
So we going down, we see puffy eyes and dark circle. Okay, uh, that's interesting. And we see a lot of supplements, hand soap. So a lot of this stuff, you know, is, is pretty generic because, right, the generic products, the commodities, they're, they're getting pushed up. We see jumbo eye pencil, okay, for eyeshadow and eyeliner. Okay, so a lot of eye stuff, a lot of eyebrow stuff, a lot of eyelash stuff. Uh, we keep going down here. Okay, Let's see if there's anything else. We got a foundation brush. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and that's the end of that page here. We can also niche down, guys. So this is something you might want to do uh, to get even further down, right? Because if we're up in the number one rank, number two rank, like that's gonna be pretty saturated. So looking through here, we can see gift sets, hair care, makeup, skin care, tools and accessories. So I'm gonna open up tools and accessories. I'm gonna look up. Uh, let's see, gift sets are always great because they're, you know, a lot of people don't refund those. They're given as gifts, uh, better reviews that way as well. Uh, so we're getting through here. Let's see, so tools and accessories going down. So a lot of eyelash stuff. Again, we're gonna go deeper into that one because this trend keeps popping up over and over again. It's, it's trying to tell me something, trying to tell us something, right? Uh, so skincare, Korean exfoliating mitts. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, exfoliating mitts. All right, I'm gonna write that one down just to take a look at it. I don't know if that's something um, I'm gonna to wanna to get too deep into. Sounds kind of gimmicky, sounds like a trend, but might as well take a look here as we're going through things. Okay, so keep going down. Got spray bottle, empty spray bottle. <laughs> it's funny they have to say that. Uh, of course it's empty, hopefully. Keep going down, if it's not, we got problems. <laughs> keep looking here, skin bonnet, hair bonnet for sleeping satin. Diane Cotton Rounds, Blackhead Remover Kits. Those those were big two, three years ago starting. Uh, let's see, Shower Brush. So Shower Brush stuff is interesting. So, you know, I'm sure there's tons of different variations of this type of thing. So let's go to Shower Brush here and see what else we can find. Again, I'm gonna show you exactly what these keywords. This is why, it's, you know, I'm excited to show you this because I, I think a lot of people get stuck on like, okay, Cameron, I got a few of these ideas, but I don't know how to like check them. I don't know how to go deeper into them. What do I do with these ideas after I write them down? So this is what we're gonna go into and hopefully it's gonna help you out a ton. Uh, going through here, uh, top 50, shower puff. I'm gonna exit out of this one just for the sake of just getting through as many categories as possible. Uh, we got Beard King Beard Bib Apron for Men. So we got a Beard apron. Okay, that's wild. <laughs> uh, I don't really grow beards, so I don't really need this, but I'm sure real men out there uh, might think this is really cool. Uh, so we're gonna look into that. Uh, we get down there, see what's going on. Nail polish, electric nail drill, new gel nail polish, no. Let's see, U-shaped hairpins, no. Let's see, bod, heck no, I can't believe that's still a thing. Keep going down, keep going down. Let's see, raw chemistry, pheromone cologne. Oh, come on, come on. I'm sure those reviews are fantastic. Because if we had more time, we'd go look at those reviews. Uh, number two page here, organic lip scrub. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, you know, uh, these trending things, we're gonna get deeper into this too as well, but these trendier things like organic lip scrub, um, it's organic things in general and, and things that are, you know, better for the environment, better for your skin, better for your health, are, are huge trends and huge things that are just gonna get bigger and bigger uh, as you know the older generations kind of uh, move on or learn or the younger people you know get educated as we know uh, everywhere we go with influencers, things like that, it's it's organic that, organic this, so organic lip scrub. And I write this down just because it's, it's gonna remind me to look for more organic things, more natural things, uh, things like that. Let's see if there's anything else here. We got plenty of ideas so far, guys. I'm really stoked on on how this is going so far. Uh, I mean, looked at sales once yet either. So if you don't even have the apps yet, the software, th this is a great start. So uh, you guys can follow along just fine here. Uh, let's see, Avon, no. Okay, so we're gonna exit out of that one and we're gonna go to the next one. So grocery and gourmet food. I know you're probably saying this, Cameron, like how do we source food? How, how do we do this stuff? Okay, yeah, it's a little harder, but again, we're outside the box. It's not impossible. I've sourced supplements, I've sourced food, I've gone to food chemistry labs in Chicago and, and done the whole thing with the white coats and walked around, taste flavors, you know, and the scientists coming back on the table and tasting it. It's, it's really fun stuff. It's actually pretty accessible. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, so the margins, we gotta do the math a little bit better, but it's 
we're able to do this. And, and if you guys want to learn more about that too, as we get down more into the details, maybe we found some really good ideas. Let me know in the comments down below if, if you're interested in that. And I can share my experiences and show you how we did that exactly. So hopping back on the screen here, uh, let's go down. So we got food, snacks. So look at this trend again, just looking through here. We got like zero sugar, um, you know, sparkling ice here. We got zero sugar Celsius with caffeine. So caffeinated beverages, of course, are great. Uh, beverages that taste good but are low calorie low sugar are really popular right now body armor same thing low sugar but have electrolytes which is big monster zero ultra sugar free so we see this trend over and over again of sugar-free options for people to enjoy that's why Lacroix is so big that's why uh sevia here so this is actually using uh, stevia instead of aspartame or something like that so people are starting to learn okay i don't want sugar sugar's bad diabetes rotten teeth heart disease, all this crazy stuff, right? So they moved on to aspartame and Diet Coke, which again, I like me some Diet Coke, but aspartame might not be the best solution for humans for an artificial sweetener. So we're moving on to stevia, something that's like a leaf extract. Essentially, I think that's what it is. I think it's a leaf and it's, it's an artificial sweetener that's supposed to be a little bit better, a little bit more natural. So we can see here, number 11 in gourmet food, these things are popping off the shelf, okay? Look at Frito-Lay coffee pairings. So coffee here, chips, cookies, nuts, uh, 30 packs. So we're getting back to the traditional stuff there. Uh, we got coffees, I've got teas, we got water, we got Propel, we got Fiji water. So the, the premium water is going here. We got the ice caffeine, we got the monk fruit sweetener, which again is another natural, no sugar, artificial sweetener that is keto friendly, diet friendly, zero carb friendly, all that good stuff. A liquid death. These are kind of funny because I always thought this was alcohol, but it's actually just sparkling water, which is crazy. Uh, keep going down here. We got coffee again, organic protein. So we see a common trend here. So maybe you know a few categories where you you know a lot. Maybe you're doing keto. Maybe you're doing carnivore diet. Maybe you're a vegan. Maybe you're pescatarian and you just eat mostly vegetables uh, and some fish there. So again, if you know these categories and there's a lot of people in each category, you probably know a lot about the food markets, what's missing, something you've gone to buy and you haven't found it. Okay. So this is kind of where the ideas get churning and something like this too it feels better to sell it's probably a little harder a little bit more competitive but it feels good to sell and it's something that we can build a brand around in the future which is becoming more and more apparent if you watched you know my recent videos in the last month three months six months it just gets more and more apparent that we need to build a brand something we're proud about some more that we're passionate about everything like that okay so next guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a Google search here and we're gonna type in new food trends. So I do this a lot for a lot of things here. So I was looking at what was popping up here. So we have this report, which I downloaded, but uh, for the sake of time, we won't go deep into that. Is we're gonna open up one of these here and maybe 10 hottest food trends and take a look. So again, we're gonna learn what is trendy, what's coming up on the market, what's gonna stay, what's not gonna stay. And we can kind of learn more about where can I fit in? Where can I get ahead of the curve? Okay, so plant-based foods, they keep growing like weeds, which you know, we can go deeper into that. I don't necessarily agree with, uh, you know, being a vegan, but I, I don't think, I think meat's good for us, essentially is what I'm trying to say, not to get too too crazy. I know people get upset about that kind of stuff, but uh, I personally love meat, eat a lot of meat, but again, people do what's best for them, right? So if they think the plant-based food is best for them, then obviously we see a huge increase, increased by 600% in the last three years. So maybe we do a vegan food, a vegan snack, vegan uh, food accessories. I don't know if there's some, something like that. I'm sure there's something there that helps people that are not food related that are vegans. So there's a, probably a whole vegan niche, maybe vegan books, vegan guides, and then, you know, vegan planners like right now foods, maybe food lists, things like that. Again, we can keep going down with this I, ideas. That's the thing about them. Most are bad, but we do this creative thing until we find something that's good or something that's usable. So vegans here, uh, very big, zero waste cuisine takes hold. So something that is uh, self-sustaining, nose to tail or leaf to root cooking are gaining momentum here. So using all the animal, using all the plant uh, is really cool. Uh, zero waste trends to try on your menu. So this is probably something that goes for restaurants, but actually I'm getting quite a bit of value here uh, of what's going on. So use the whole fish, things like that. Obviously we're not gonna sell fish on Amazon. But anyways, healthy foods that are good for your gut. So kombucha, uh, these are probiotics, prebiotics, maybe some enzymes. I'm not sure if we can even sell enzymes, but uh, fermenting foods. Uh, it'd be pretty easy to sell fermented foods foods on Amazon because they go in a jar and they're, they're not to be so temperature sensitive. I could be wrong about that, but again, something we can look into and just another idea we can kind of explore. Uh, next, uh, kombucha, 
Uh, it's funny, I'm, I'm drinking a kombucha right here. So I agree with that trend. I freaking love it as of late. Number five, the growth of superfood powders trend. So this is kind of getting into like, you know, those superfoods that are really good for you for probiotics, prebiotics. So it kind of fits in the same range of gut health, but there's other stuff too. You know, we got, let's see, maca root, cacao, ground turmeric, mushroom powder, things like that. Okay, so maybe we sell a turmeric latte powder mix that you can just throw into hot water, something like that, right? So again, I know these sound complicated ideas, but they're actually not too bad. And if there's something that really hits home for you, like this will be fun. It's, it's again, going back to that lab, don't try to brag, but it was probably one of the coolest things I've ever done was going into a lab, a food chemistry lab and them making me different flavors of stuff, adjusting it on the fly. Like this was too tart. This was too sweet. They adjust it, come back in an hour and give me the same thing, but with my adjustments. It's one of the funnest things I've ever done. Next six, keto was one of the biggest food trends here. Okay, so we see what's going on. Cold brew coffee set to explode. There's tons of things that could go with cold brew coffee. There's a, you know, kits, accessories, things to help mix in your cream or like there's so many things that are crazy for this. Uh, things that like hold ice better, but don't condensate. Okay, that's really annoying when I have a really cold beverage and it starts dripping all over the, the coffee table and I get yelled at because I left a big old uh, cursor around it or whatever you want to call it, a stain. I ate non-alcoholic beers. Maybe there's a there's a kit here you can sell them. Maybe there's instructions of how to do this. Maybe there's a pamphlet of like, how do you brew these types of beers? The porters, the lagers, the, all that good stuff, right? Again, crazy ideas, I know, but this is how we get flowing. Alternative coffee brewing is in. Okay, that's interesting. Pour over coffee, batch brew, siphon, AeroPress, Chimex, French press. I don't even know what half these things are. I'm sure there's you have utensils for them. You have instructions for them. You have kits for them. I know pour over coffee. If we go to Amazon right now, go to pour over coffee maker. We click this bad boy in. We can see this one has 33,000 reviews. So I'm not saying to sell this, but if we know that it's going to continue to grow, we can niche down in these markets. So if I pull up Helium 10 here, first time using this. So this is the extension from Helium 10. If you get it, it's a free download. Just type in Helium 10 extension on Google. It's a Chrome extension. You can download it right away and use it. So we see this one, the top here is doing $432,000 in sales, you know, per month. Okay. And it's going to continue to grow. Like the trend's only going up and up and up. Okay. So this is cool. We know that there's still room to grow here. Maybe we don't sell this exactly, but we sell something else that goes with it. Okay. So accessories. So if we go up to here, uh, hit this guy up. Okay. And we go down and we can see different. We see the, the hot kettle here. Sorry about all the pop-ups. Again, if you get helium 10, it's going to pop up. There's a lot of cool charts here that we might tackle as we go on. Uh, so we see a electric water kettle. Okay. Um, are there tablets you can use to clean this out? Cause I know it gets, you know, if you're boiling water with minerals and stuff in it, it's going to calcify and do all crazy stuff. Maybe there's, there's a special brush for these, these really types of designs of kettles, things like that. We have coffee grinders. I know there's manual ones. I know there's ones for backpacking. Okay. So I'm going on an extreme tangent here, but this is, I just wanted to show you the first part of this idea process of, of I get a lot of uh, people saying, Cameron, I can't get the ideas turning. I don't even know what to look for. I don't even know how to get started. Well, this is how I get started. Okay. So this is how I get ideas turning. You can see how fast I'm talking. I'm getting excited, I'm getting really excited because this is fun. This is cool. And this is what you need to do as well. Kind of get the ideas churning, talk about a ton of ideas, go back to your product sheet and you can start looking up here too. So you can go in here and even, you know, if you had a special note section, you could be the top 10 food trends here look at that type 10 twice here because i'm dys dyslexic or something if i go over here grab a copy of this now i have something to reference later so i'll go to my links section and go right here so i'm collecting this information i'm putting it in one place so i can i can start capturing my ideas and this this will keep happening this will keep expanding over the days over the next coming weeks as i do product research okay uh so going back uh, to food ideas. Let's see if there's anything here. Uh, I'll probably just reference that list if we want to check into any ideas here. I have a few things on top of my head that might be interesting to look into, but I first wanted to quick tackle the handmade products section and then the health and household. So going through here, collecting a few more ideas, uh, we can see that these are, these are handmade, right? So this is the section, but that you can get inspiration from this in the decor section, things like that. So you can apply the same kind of, if you really like kitchen stuff, you really like fashion, if you really like home decor, things like that, this is kind of where you can get ideas of, 
all right, if these handmade things are doing well in this niche, I can probably do something similar to this or get some inspiration from it, okay? Uh, so going down here, this stuff doesn't really catch my eye personally, if I'm gonna be honest with you, but I know a lot of people love this kind of stuff. So you can use the same kind of principles uh, to use this, and then you can even niche down into different things. Pet supplies, so handmade pet supplies, how cool is that? So going through here, we see this 18K gold-plated dog chain. That's pimp, okay? Go down here. We see a lot of stuff is custom here, but you can set up custom stores on your Amazon front. Nervous Rescue, please don't pet. A lot of cool ideas here. Uh, collar bandanas. At first, I thought this was a Speedo, but <laughs> that's just how wrong my mind is here. Uh, keep going down here. They look like Speedos, <laughs> but they're, they're bandanas. That's hilarious. Uh, so this is what I do to go down this, and you can just keep niching down. We could do this for hours, guys. Hours and hours and hours. Okay, so I'll try to do this on the next videos, going deeper into different categories to make sure that we, we cover them all, but I want to get to the next steps in going deeper. But I'm going to give this a quick look over uh, for the health and household section to see if there's anything that kind of pops up here. Uh, so Nature's Ways, Simbunxus, Black Elderberry, Batteries. Okay, we got uh, hydration packs here. So electrolyte powder. Again, a lot of things we've been seeing. Health and household is weird. It's a combination of everything you use in your house, and it's a combination of like the food section. Like it's weird how this works. Supplements, thermometer. Keep going down. Something crazy here just reminds me of, of some of the more popular stuff, like the electrolytes and stuff. Stain removers. Maybe there's a natural stain remover. Okay, that's exactly right. Non-toxic laundry stain remover. But what if this was organic, natural? Like what if this was something that um, you know was was up to date and kind of the trends going on right now? So I'm gonna write that down to look into. So organic, let's see, stain, nat all natural, stain remover. Okay, so that's down there to look into a little bit more too. All right, and go back wrong page here. We get sleep eye masks. So there's a lot of things in the sleep category too. We can get deeper into. But essentially, we're looking for these big categories, these big trends, and then we're gonna do some, some fine digging here on Helium 10 next and go deeper on these things and kind of figure out maybe there's a little spot in this big niche where we can get our little corner, make a nice little brand, uh, make a nice little target market where we're attacking a certain person. I shouldn't say attacking, but uh, marketing to a certain person within that big niche. So we have our little spot and it's more targeted to those people and it will convert a lot better to those people as well. And we can take advantage of that. Okay. So we have black box. Uh, so what this tool is, is just an Amazon product research tool. You can go through with keywords. So what we could do is we can go back to these categories. So say you didn't like that bestsellers list, just to show you guys this real quick. What I would do next is to put in these categories categories here and then reference this and then black box will literally tell us a bunch of bunch of stuff so if i put search here just to show you a little example here if i typed in you know uh, it's got to have 200 searches to you know 5,000 searches per month so search volume how many times these people are typing these keywords uh 3,000 to 20,000 here and then price is 13 to 55. And um, you know, if you guys want to learn more about why I put these references, again, I'm trying to get away from this because I want you guys to think outside the box when it comes to product research, instead of having these criteria that everybody just fits into and tries to do as well. So I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna hit search to show you guys what this looks like if you haven't seen it before. Uh, but essentially, you know, we can start seeing some keywords here that fit our criteria that are in the gourmet thing. So cake top or wedding, that'd be a good one to look into marshmallow leaf uh and we can keep going down it's coffee substitution gluten free like what is that uh, i wish we had more time because I'd, I'd definitely click on that one but essentially this is what i do next so say if the be the best sellers list wasn't generating me ideas this is where i go so they just siphon all the keywords on amazon tell us exactly what the the price field is the monthly sales uh and the monthly revenue as well as the search volume per month for this type of keyword so this is this keyword right here is getting 204 searches per month so we can kind of see what that traffic and what the demand is for that type of product. But the actual tool we're gonna to use here is called Magnet. Okay, so I wanted to show you Black Box real quick just because that is their product research app. But Magnet is their keyword research tool. Here, they're gonna open up here. So this is kind of where a good place is to kind of discover more ideas based on yours. So if we go to eyelashes here, we go to Magnet, okay? We can hit this, eyelashes. We probably shouldn't type in eyelash like that. Eyelashes, okay, so we type get keywords here. This is gonna fetch all the keywords related to eyelashes as well as eyelashes itself. So we can see fluffy eyelashes, reusable false eyelashes, all that good stuff. We can also start filtering by their search volume. So how much demands here? So I actually wanna do this, I wanna do 500 here to let's say uh, 
3,000. So we can kind of get on the lower end of this field. So again, we're trying to find our little niche here. Uh, Man, IQ score, we can mess around that a little later. I'll let you know. Uh, word count here, I like to do two to you know five. I don't want really long tail keywords. And I don't want one word just because it could be, you know, eyelashes, right? We don't want that. Uh, competing products, we don't have to mess with that right now. Uh, title density, match type. Let's see, no, we're okay here. And uh, let's hit apply filters. So there's so much data here, guys, we could kind of siphon through. We see word frequency up here. So what often is used with eyelashes? So we got kissed, glue, natural, magnetic, mink, extension, false, ordeal, fake, kit, all this good stuff right here. And then we can see right down here, we can see that the search volume uh, is right here. So we, we're within that range I just put here. So if we go over here, we see uh, quite a few keywords, right? So eyelash glue clear. Okay, so wh what if there's like an all natural glue we could use for this? So we can look down here, we see a, a crap ton of sales, but what about all natural eyelash glue clear? Okay, so we type that in here. We see 429 uh, adhesive, hypoallergenic dermatology, crystal clear, eyelash glue, you know, because when I use hair gel and stuff like that, like I'm trying to use the stuff that's all natural. I know maybe I'm a hippie, but I know this is the trend moving up. So maybe there's something here where we can find an all natural organic glue that we can use for our eyelashes. Okay. So I know that's a thing. I know people would look for that and want to use that because they don't want to put toxic glue on their freaking eyeballs, right? Like that's just not how it works. Okay. So I dig deep into there. If we hit this helium 10 thing and look at the sales real quick uh, with this. So all natural eyelash glue so let's take this off let's take clear off here and let's see if i could spell natural right right here let's type this in i want to see how many searches it gets per month so we type this in we get this it just doesn't say natural on this though it doesn't even say it says latex free but what if it said all natural on top here right that would be exactly what this person who typed this in be looking for so right there is a hole in the market because if the first picture doesn't say all natural or the first things in the, the title don't say all natural then it's not it's not hitting that target demographic and that's what i'm talking about when i'm talking about niching down hitting that person everything like that we don't see a search volume here so maybe this isn't a good idea maybe there's something else they're using so if i go back and use the autofill bar here we can see if there's anything else i can kind of see when it comes to that that field so natural okay so how big is this market i doubt this one has keyword searches or anything like that but it's worth a look Nope, so that one does not. But we can just go back to our tool over here, Ignite, and we can actually put in this phrase here. So this, you know, organic. Let's see if there's anything here. Apply filters. So we go down, no data. Okay, so maybe I'm way off here, but this is why we do this. We're trying to learn to see if there's anything. So natural look, fake eyelashes, natural. Short eyelashes, natural look. Okay, so we just learned that it doesn't matter to the eyelash people that their glue is natural or organic. Okay, so we're moving on here because that's kind of where the direction I wanted to go with. So we're just gonna go to the next idea. I don't like this. Uh, there's tons of little accessories we can go deeper into if we wanted to, but for the sake of just getting through more ideas, we had the exfoliating mitts. So I'm gonna do that one on Amazon first. So I go back to exfoliating mitts. Okay, we're gonna look that up. And we see a ton of different mitts here, exfoliating gloves. Uh, we see the Korean one we saw earlier, deep exfoliating mitts. Okay, I wanna look at sales here, guys, first. All right, so we see the top guy doing 630,156. Uh, so we see a lot here. I wish I knew more about this product in general because then I kind of look, okay, is there anything missing from this market? Maybe if I was really enthused about this and want to go deeper, I'd read a ton of reviews. I'd read a lot of questions on the listing. So I go into here, I go down to the reviews. I'd read all the negative ones. Uh, if we go down to one stars here, I'd start reading these and, and figure out like what do people hate about this? What's going on here? If we go back, I'd also start reading the questions. Let's see if I go down. I start reading these questions to see if there's anything missing. Maybe people are kind of pissed off or are asking certain questions that they're getting nope to. So are these difference in level exfoliating depending on the color mint use nope? Maybe that's an idea right there. So someone thought it, maybe it'd be a really cool idea to have different levels of exfoliating depending on the mint color and everything like that, okay? I will also look for things that are re recently purchased with it. So we see long exfoliating black washcloth, bath towel. Uh, we see Asian exfoliating bath washcloth. Okay, so maybe it's a kit here. So we have the hand one, we have a, uh, a washcloth one, and maybe that's a kit right there. But my guess is this is probably something very similar. Is it something that just goes on the hand? Yeah, it's something 
looks a little similar there. But again, we can go deeper in this. Again, just the ideas, guys. Just get the ideas turning. But this is what I'm looking for. The next steps to see if there's any like apparent openings in the market. So let's go back here and let's go to shower brush. So this will be a good example to kind of see what's going on when it comes to this. So if we go to shower brush here, okay, and I want to make sure my filters look okay. So we go shower brush and we let's go let's go 10,000 this time here to kind of open it up, get more ideas flowing things like that. Shower brush, it's loading right now. So we go down here, uh, we see shower brush dandruff, that's interesting, backwasher for men, uh, body brush for shower, long handle scrub, bath scrubber, body brush for back. So we have a lot of ideas here. If we use this magnet IQ score, which if we hover it over here, it'll tell us what it means, but just to read it to you guys so you guys know, score based on the ratio of estimated search volume versus number of competing products. A high score means a relatively high number of searches compared to a number of of competitors a low score means the opposite so the higher the score means the better the opportunity essentially it has high search volume it has high search volume in a low amount of competitors okay so 146,123. this is a little high for me i did type that in but it must have refreshed once we did it so let's go let's go 500 to 8,000 this time again guys there's no science to this that's what i'm saying there's no categories there's no box we put ourselves into i'm just going to use creative ideas that come to my mind at that time so two to four five here keywords is apply a filter and go down so we see filter by magnet iq score which is a pretty good thing to understand the opportunities here so we see search volume 1962 a goo gog skin scrubber no idea what that is so we see that's a brand so brands we stay out of but it's a blackhead remover facial cleaner things like that so i'm gonna x out of that uh eco dry body brush okay that's interesting so this again another brand possibly eco was it eco tools yeah eco tools i uh, usually yeah stay with the brands here try to get the more generic uh, keyword strawberry legs like what is that is that another brand so we see strawberry legs treatment ingrowed hair i'm not sure what that is but that's interesting strawberry leg treatment that's a huge title how did they get that away with that that's crazy uh let's see prut Exfoliant scrub for strawberry legs clearing treatment. What is strawberry legs? Is that like a syndrome or something? What are they and how do they? Strawberry legs is not a condition in itself. Instead, a strawberry legs refers to appearance of the pores on your legs and can be used to describe several skin conditions. If you have strawberry legs, your legs maybe have dark dots that are similar to seeds in strawberries what okay so there's a whole nother niche right there for strawberry legs what things can help so if we go back to our amazon page here uh we can see if there's anything else that will help with this so we see the we just see this one scrubbing cream okay and we have strawberry legs four thousand searches per month okay um strawberry legs so what if i type into google trends here so another tool i like to use for trends guys is google trends and I could type in strawberry legs. So is this something that's like heating up? Search term, past 12 months. Okay, we see this bump right here. People are actually talking about this for the first time in 12 months, past five years. So we see this every summer. Okay, that makes sense. Because people in the summer, right? They want to look good. They're in the bathing suits. And we see this trend. But look at if four years ago, 20, 2018, this was down like people didn't really talk about this okay then it goes down in the winter fine then it, it bumps up here again in the summer so if we see summer over summer over summer it's bumping up this means this trend's increasing and we can see it at the highest numbers ever starting this summer okay so people are starting to talk about this yes that means it's seasonal a bit but people are always gonna be concerned about their skin and the more the trend this goes up they're gonna want to have legs that look good all year round plus if it's a summer product that's fine we can gear up for that we can get ready looks like it's still sell during the the troughs part it's just gonna be a little lower that's fine that's not a big deal because really what it comes down to is just the best opportunity so i would start looking into what else could be going into this so exfoliating scrub so maybe it's a kit with exfoliating cream uh, for the strawberry legs and then we have a shower brush exfoliating shower brush or the hand mitts okay so strawberry leg kit if we go here there's anything nothing is here so the things we're just looking at the strawberry uh exfoliating cream shower brush could be used here if it's gentle enough for the legs all the you know help exfoliating and the exfoliating mitts right down here maybe this is part of that kit okay guys so i honestly think that's a freaking fantastic idea so i'm gonna write that one down strawberry legs very legs possible kit 
Okay, so I'm going to talk about there is no kit here. We can do cream, scrubs, scrub, brush, exo mitts. Okay, so exfoliating mitts. The only reason I, I abbreviate that because I don't know how to spell it <laughs> and I don't want to embarrass myself here. Uh, we can put trend is increasing year over year and summer heavy product. Okay, so it's just good to know that because it is a little bit of a con, but it's not a huge deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that so it doesn't you know leak into here. So I'm going to also grab this right here in the links section. And I guess you can cover any links you guys want here. So, you know, this will just kind of help me refer back to everything going on here. And then I'm going to exit out some of this stuff too, guys. And then if we go um, exfoliating mitts, I know what those are now. I can go back and search those. And then lastly, I was going to grab this. So I, I understood what strawberry legs were. And then I'm just going to put this one right here. Okay. Awesome, guys. Very cool. That one's actually very, very exciting. And I'm glad I found that one in real time with you guys, because this is something we can go on and on about. We can figure out exactly what they need. We can learn more about it. Maybe there's YouTube videos. We can learn more about Strawberry Lakes, how to cure it, how to treat it. What tools then, if we know how to cure it and treat it, would go right for that and put it into a kit that's getting 4,000 searches per month for Strawberry Legs? <laughs> that, that one's that one's probably the best one you find. Okay, guys. So that's fantastic. But this is what I'm talking about. This is this is this is what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys like this so far. If you do, let me know. But let's do a few more here, guys. So I didn't like shower brush and I like the strawberry legs kit a lot more. So I'm gonna go next to beard apron and I'm gonna go back to the magnet tool here. And I'm gonna go to beard apron. Cool, just beard apron appeared here. So we go down. Let's do the search volume again. So 500 to 8,000 here. So this one might be a little harder to do this with, but we're going to try it anyways, just to see what comes up again. The more weird things we can do, the better. As uh, so we see gift for guys, men, gifts, ideas, things like that. Let's go to magnetic Q score and we see beard bib. Okay. Let's look at this on Amazon and this is exactly what we saw. So we see one with 5,000 reviews, 3,000 reviews, 532 reviews, 23 reviews, 220. Let's see, 433, 427, 140. And let's look at sales for this. I want to see if the volume is going down. So we see 300,000, 33,000, 7,000, 21,000. So it's just one guy kind of dominating here, Beard King, uh, which I got to give him credit. That's a fantastic name. So actually, we can see here, guys, on this ad, the visual beard bib as seen on Shark Tank. So this explains a lot why this is kind of a trend going forward here. And uh, we can see a lot of copycats here. So this is something usually I like to stay away from things I see on Shark Tank from the fact of they usually have full legal teams. They like to uh, write cease and desist orders and things like that to get you off if it is patented. Uh, so I like to stay away from that, guys. So I'm just on that note, I'm going to go away. But we also could just do beard, right? We can do beard. We can do the same thing and we can go from there. So as we're on the subject, might as well do it. Same thing where we're going to do 500 to 8,000 here and then a word count from two to five. Apply filters. And then we're going to do magnet IQ score again. And then we see Amish, Amish beard balm. Okay. So it's kind of like a cool homemade beard balm. Obviously, you know, this would be hard to mimic. This is great branding because, you know, men, for some reason, they like the rustic thing for their beard and the rustic branding for that. I've seen that do very, very well. Uh, Viking revolutionary beard balm. Again, yep. Us men, very predictable. Looks exactly the same here. Same branding. Okay. Moving on here. Grave before shave beard. Hair tone, Viking, Tantani, Max, Pacino's beard pencil, beard king, Matt's beard, bulldog beard oil. Okay, I'm sure we can go deeper on that, but that one isn't catching my eye so much. Uh, so let's go back to our product research sheet. We're going to delete this. And now we're going to go to lip scrub. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to type in lip scrub. Okay, lip scrub here, guys. And then we're going to do same thing here, 500 to, let's do 10,000 for this one. And let's do word count two to five six here just being a little different phrases containing let's try organic okay so again we're going to try the same thing we tried earlier organic lipstick okay that search comes up we got 1200 searches for that uh let's just not put a volume on this i just want to see any results coming in here so let's delete that let's hit apply filters see if there's anything else that pops up okay so we got a couple more okay let's do a search on at least not like 200 here sorry about that guys apply filters uh we see let's search by search volume organic lip scrub okay so we get 500 searches for this interesting 
So we go down, organic lip scrub, vanilla, so we see 2,500 uh, reviews. That's quite a bit. I hate how that's not like listed right here. Again, if we had this photo right here with branding that says organic or all natural right here, I think this would kill. Going down here, eco lips, that's pretty smart. Uh, Nico lips, Bella organic Nico lips lip balm for lightning. Uh, let's see, organic. So that's these organic right here, uh, 272. Let's see what the sales are for these products. So we see 12,000, 2,000, 21,000, 9,000, 2,000. Okay, so there is some potential here, but it's you know, it's no strawberry legs, but it is something that is, is very interesting and uh, something we can go further into. So organic lip scrub. So I'm just going to grab this link here this will give me an idea to go refresh back onto and i'm going to grab organic lip scrub and go down here there is a small market 500 500 searches per month uh, a good amount of competitors though not a ton but you know there are some it's not like it's completely blank uh, we know organic trend will rise though okay okay let's delete that and then let's do one more here guys so organic all natural stain remover okay let's go back to magnet let's go stain remover all right we're gonna do search volume of 200 to 10,000 here a uh, phrase containing let's do two to i don't know seven here and phrase containing uh organic or just do natural let's do natural and take a look at that let's hit apply filters and let's go to magnet iq score so we see whoops so that again let's bring this out so we see some brands here natural stain remover okay so we see 972 searches per month we click this and let's see what we got here so we got let's see percy Peracy stain remover for clothes laundry spray it doesn't even say natural They're like why does it say all natural right here or all natural in the branding. So this does say natural here in the brand, the logo, but you could barely see this. Uh, let's see, Hate Stains Co, non-toxic. So that's the thing, first thing ever here. Eco E-Cover, that's smart brandy just because it, it feels more natural just by the brand of it. Uh, Paracy Baby Stain Remover for clothes. So people want to know this is all natural or non-toxic. That'll be the first thing I say because if we're in this little niche, natural stain remover, like, okay, if they type this in, they're going to buy the one that, that fits what they're looking for, right? That resonates. And none of these resonate right off the bat. You have to dig into it. So we know that most people are lazy. They're gonna see the first thing natural. They, if they saw a big bottle right here that said natural stain remover and had decent reviews or uh, decent prices in competitive field, they're gonna pick that one. They're gonna click it first, okay? So that's what we're looking for right here. So this one is actually a, a really cool, interesting one as well. And guys, stuff like this, the margins are usually huge because usually at the end of the day, it's just like some herbs and some water and some certain things, uh, some acids, maybe like some, I don't, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't speculate on what I think <laughs> is in stain remover, but it's, it's mostly liquid. It's mostly water. So obviously selling water has high margins. Uh, so this is something I'd be really interested in. So I'm going to grab, actually, I'm just going to grab this link here. So I have it for reference for easier reference. Uh, and we're going to type in we're not, we're going to just do natural stain remover here and go deeper on the organic route later if i want to explore that but natural stain remover a thousand searches no big branding on natural or non-toxic high margins most likely and let's look at sales real quick guys that's one thing i missed that's probably probably pretty important here so if we exit out of that exit out of that here we are with that, but I'm guessing with 2,500 reviews, uh, just me kind of knowing how Amazon works, it's going to be just fine here. Uh, so we go here, uh, not available, but this Night Stains Co. 677,000, Eco Cover 5,000, Grandma Secret 225,000, 3,000, 11,000. So if we can just carve out with these big guys, 677, 223, we can carve out you know these nice little 11,000, 8,000s and work our way up. Uh, that's fine with me. That's what I'm looking for, right? It's going to be lower competition because we took advantage of a, a market that they don't care about. They're getting 223,000 sales or $600,000 in sales. They're not going to change their listing just to focus on this little guy. That's where we come in. That's where we take advantage. That's why we're doing this. Okay, guys? So 
if this was helpful for you guys, just, just follow along, rewatch this video if you want. If you want more videos like this, subscribe. Make sure you stay up to date. I'm going to be doing more product research videos as we go along. Also, I can see in the metrics who subscribes, who doesn't subscribe. I see there's like 80% of you rascals who just watch and don't subscribe. So if you're one of those 80%, just hit that subscribe button. It helps me a lot. Makes you, it reinfers me. I know it sounds like I'm being a baby, but it reassures me that I'm doing the right things. I'm, I'm showing you guys the right stuff. This is actually valuable. So hitting that subscribe button really helps me out, really gives me, you know, more momentum, more motivation to make more videos in the future. Uh, please take care of my little childish needs here by hitting that subscribe button. Uh, let me know if this is helpful down in the comments below, guys. Otherwise, uh, good luck with the strawberry legs idea, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.